Hello, welcome to Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll take a short break and we'll be delving straight into our conversation for today. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program and um, on this episode we have um, His Excellency um, Mr. Afari Apiedu Donko um, and the name would resonate with something banking and finance and then maybe at a later stage diplomacy and, and he excelled at both areas. But he's going to walk us through his own story um, for those of us who may have heard his name but never had any engagement with him for us to um, benefit from the highs and lows and what he has to offer. Um, he has walked the path and not just talked, but he has lived it and experienced it. And so it's time to have a chat with Mr. Aparidonko. It's good to have you, sir. Thank you. It's been long in coming, but it finally came. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Trust me, I've been trying to sit down with Mr. Afaridonko for, for some time now. And the time I'm talking about is not months, it's not weeks, it's been years. But it finally came and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're welcome. And, um, you know, when, <coughs> when I was in the university, I used to hear the name Mr. Afari Donko as uh, the, 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 the architect of, of the banking system, you know, from where we sat as young students. And, you know, I, I had engaged with some of the people you, you, had, you had mentored. And, and, and led in, in, in the industry, but never had the opportunity to have one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, I'll see you every now and then, either in the newspaper or on, uh, on television back in the day. But, but I'm so excited that uh, we are here today. So if I hear the name Afari, Ekwiapim, Apiedu, Ekwiapim, Donko, could be Ekwiapim, it could be uh, um, any other, I can't even vote a region has Donko. Um, so, how would you describe yourself? Before I answer the question, uh, please pardon me. Uh, I have to make one or two corrections mm -hmm. in your introduction. Uh, number one, the proper pronunciation mm -hmm. of my middle name is not Apiedu. Mm -hmm. It is Apiedu. Okay. You see, intonation is everything. Uh, and therefore, as most of us come from various parts of the country, one word pronounced in a certain way could mean a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So please take note of that. Secondly, I am not the one who did any massive change in the banking field. No. Uh, I contributed my little bit. I tweaked to help tweak the system a bit to move on and make progress. So please, uh, let's get that straight. Now, if you are listening to us on radio, I'm smiling. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the reason why you, you had that question, I do understand. I do appreciate. <coughs> My ferry is a Bri. My dad is from a Bri. And the middle name appeared to, it's my father's name, actually. And the surname don't call, it's all the uh, siblings, and that's the name of the family. But the reason why I'm a fairy, I appear to Donko, whose mother, that's a fairy's mother, me. My mother is from Latte. So I'm a typical Equapim. But the issue of the names, my dad had only one sibling, a brother, uh, who uh, was in education, taught at Prempe College. Later on, I'm sure we'll get there. And then moved on to Congo to my secondary school before, you know, popping off. And uh, two boys, and they had children. So each one of them would name his first son, if possible, after his dad, who was a fairy. And they named his second born after Nketiah, that's their mother. So to differentiate between 
And by the way, my big uncle, that's my father's big brother, uh, his real name was Obing. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, Afere, Obing Donko, and Afere, Apiedu Donko. The Apiedu Afere, and then Obing Afere. And therefore, when we were much, much younger, we devised a means of differentiating between Obing's children and Apiedu's children. And therefore, my cousin, who was also a fairy, was called Afabing. Kwesi Afabing Donko. That is Afere or Bing Donko. As against me, mm -hmm. Afere, Apied Donko. Hence the difference. But I, I'm an Aquapi. Interesting configuration. You know, so where, where were you born? I was born in Accra. Okay. And um, as a young person growing up, did you have any engagement with the Aquapim area? Physically? Oh, yes. Uh, my initial upbringing was with my grandma. And uh, everything that I think I've achieved, I will allude a huge percentage to my grandma. So this was in a or in... My Latte. grandma, that's my mom's mom, in Latte. Latte. So you ever lived in Latte as a, as uh, a kid? Not live there and go to school there, okay. but live but there, you, go there, you know, in and out. And sort you look of. forward to it as, that's as right. a young person. That's right. Yeah. But the, the, the actual place that you, I could relate to, and I still do relate to, is Mengwasi. Yeah. Mengwasi. That's where I started class one. Where? Mengwasi. I didn't say Mengwasi. I said Mengwasi. That's how you pronounce it. Mengwasi. Yes. I said Mengwasi. 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 That's mango. I say. Oh. Mango. I say. In a crappy, the mango, you call it mango or something? Mango. That's very stylish. Yes. <laughs> Mengwasi. Mengwasi. Yes. <laughs> Where is the name of nobody? <laughs> Mengwasi is a, is, a, is, a, is a town between um, uh, the Kufuridia Road, right? That's right, off the Kufuridia Road. Mm -hmm. So it's a railway station there between, um, uh, is it Akrabo? It's on the railway line going uh -huh. towards Kufuridia. Uh -huh. uh, and you have Mengwasi there, it was a cocoa buying area uh, situated in the eastern region, yeah. not far from Akrabo and Kukuya and all those little Mengwasi. towns. Mengwasi. Mengwasi, yes. And uh, uh, you show the gentleman that you mentioned. He he comes from there. He's in charge of that area. Yeah. And uh, remember, I say I'm so proud to be associated with. I went there last about ten years ago, ten, ten to fifteen years ago. You could recognize I, some I, of the features of the, of I the went, village. I went straight to where we used to live, and wow. uh, the structure is still there. I started building the top wooden structure, and uh, I stood there. Part of it is broken down, and I could just recollect, uh, yes, you know, the some vivid of the experiences, uh, yes. thing, yeah, where, where I used to sleep and all that, and with my grandma and my younger sister, the two of us. Oh, nice! And I started, you know, uh, when so I was. So, what was your grandma there. doing then, trader? No, a widow. Her husband had passed on. She was a teacher. Oh, okay. And my grandmother attended Wesley High School, like mm. my mom. Mm. So she was in teaching, a uh, teacher, and uh, having lost a husband and an only child being my mother, mm -hmm. it was automatic that we should live with her. Yeah. And that's where I had all my basics from. Wow. Schooling. So w w w can you tell us about the, the whole uh, progression of your, oh, yeah. uh, as we used to call it, elementary school? Yeah, I'll give you a quick one. It wasn't in one place. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad and mom were working at the post office. And uh, you had the post office on the trains, you know. So I've lived and attended school in Mengwasi, where I started. Then later on, as parents would always demand their kids from their, you know, their parents, that's our grandparents, uh, moved on from Mengwasi, went, I've gone to school in Sekandi, in Adiambra. I've been to school in uh, Suboy, uh, here in the Eastern region. From Mangwasi to a boy, been to school in Koforidia, been to school in Dunkwa or you know, all these areas are really we, we are still we are still talking about elementary school. Yeah, elementary school. I haven't started secondary school at all. Yeah. So, and then in Samum, moved to Samum, and then from Samum to Accra, where I was born. But in Accra, mm -hmm. I was there for only barely two years, and then mm -hmm. uh, went to secondary school in Kumasi. Oh wow! Which school in Accra was that, and which year? Is this? Uh, the one and only Accra Royal. 
<laughs> yes. Not KG Royal. Oh, oh, you mean Colin Gunner Royal? Not that one. Right. People Akara like Royal. to stylize things. So KG Royal. Yes. It makes their team Akara look Royal. some way. <laughs> so Accra Royal. Yes. Uh, it was Accra Royal. Uh, it was a private school, right? It must have been. Yes. Yeah, yeah, private yeah, school, yeah. not. Mm. Uh, any of these government schools. Yeah, yeah. Because it was James very school. loud when we were kids. Accra, mm -hmm. Accra Royal. Yes, yes, yes. You are, you, are, you know, you are well to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, are, you, are taught, you are taught to be straightforward and taught to be honest in your dealings. Mm. Yes, and the issue of uh, a subject being impossible to learn or unsurmountable, it's, it's out of the question. Mm, mm, if you're a mm. true Accra Royal son or child. You remember the exact years you passed through Accra Royal? Oh, 1957, 58. Mm. Yes, you I remember any of the guys you met there, like who oh, later on no. became prominent in, in public no, life? No, rather, there were people that I looked up to, like Governor J.S. Oh, you know, yes, yes, you yes. You also went to Accra Royal? Of course. He's wow. the big daddy there. And... Uh, uh, wherever he is, oh boy, yes, yes. That was a good story to tell yes. about Accra Royal. I, I, I don't even know whether it's still, it's still there. You know, some of these well, schools I'm, couldn't make it beyond uh, the millennium. Not the millennium. Yeah, but, I presume. Yeah. Well, it could be if you still do. You still have Bishop School and um, yeah, Bishop Bishop and, and Kimbu and all that. Kimbu, all yeah, Kimbu is there. Bishop yeah. Bishop School is there. I remember. Um, Bishop School is there. Mm. Kimbu is there. Akutolante, they, they are all there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they, those were um, typical government um, institutions. But yeah. yeah. That's why. I must a confess, few, I haven't been there for a very yeah. long time. So a few of the private um, primary schools along the coast, some of them I think are no more. Mm. We had the likes of Radiant Way um, yeah. and, and the others. As you move into the Collegon area, mm. um, I don't know what became of them. But suffice to say, yes. it's it now takes you into Accra proper. Yes. And how were you doing that? Where were you living at the time? Asalam Down. Oh, Asalam Down. Yes. But that, uh, at the time, Asalam Down was for, far away. Yes. Yeah. There used to be even school uh, school uh, school bus, eh? Okay. School children's bus, you know. But then you get to a point you have to get and walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, if for whatever reason you miss the bus, you walk. From Asalam down? Them, yeah, to, to school. And you shouldn't be late. Pass through Art Center? Yes, yes, they go through Bukum and all that. Oh, you enter the Bukum, uh, Jamfi Brothers, Jamfi Brothers. Jamfi Brothers, London Market. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. London Market. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the important thing is you should not be late. Yeah, but that one stayed with you. So you now, should not be late. Never, you shouldn't be late. I'm not, I'm never late anyway. I hope you politicians are listening. <laughs> In Ghana, when you're a politician, the, 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 the later you appear, the, the, the better you feel. It's like you shouldn't be the first to be there. Then it means that you're a big man. Ola <laughs> <laughs> So, So, uh, from Accra Royal, where did we find yes, ourselves? From Accra Royal. Secondary school. You know, I found myself at uh, Premier College. Okay. Uh, Kumasi, because my... Uncle, my, remember I mentioned mm -hmm. uh, Obing Donko, mm -hmm. the headmaster. He used to be a teacher oh, at Prenter okay. College, you know, English teacher. Uh, one of the most senior uh, Ghanaians uh, teaching there. He used to be a lot of whites. Mm -hmm. And a uh, uh, headmaster was at a Bruce or something like that. And I got in there from 1, 1959, January. In those days, it was uh, January to December. That's the academic year three times. So that's how I started. And I still have my classmates around. And wow. uh, yes, we meet from time to time. Wow. Uh, quite wow. a number have passed on, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. pushing the barriers and all that. So <laughs> that was it. And uh, first year, uh, I did fairly well. My dad was out of town. And therefore, my mom who was then working at the exams council. I had to impress upon uh, a colleague friend of hers, a schoolmate, we were still at school, to help pay the school fees for the first year because I didn't do well enough to have a scholarship the first year. And my uncle said, sorry, 
I can't because uh, he had little kids coming up. So, and I mentioned it in my book, we had to approach, my mom had to approach her friend's uh, husband, the late Professor Bintiencho, Kwamna Bintiencho, who paid my school fees, mm. 75 pounds per annum that those, day, those days. And I'm forever grateful. Of course, I had to pay my homage to the son because by the time uh, this book was written, he had passed on. He wasn't around. So, but for Professor Bintiencho, maybe mm. I wouldn't have uh, uh, gone mm. ahead with it. But the second year, I then uh, went and joined my uncle at uh, Konongo Dumati Secondary School. Okay, he had moved to Konongo. He had moved to Konongo uh, because he couldn't, of course, he, couldn't, he had that appointment and he couldn't help me out with the scholarship. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't afford it. But at Konongo, he applied for me to get Kuku Marketing Board Scholarship. Scholarship back in the day. So then I continued. That's course. Yes. We used to call it course. Yes. Yeah, Konongo Odumasi Secondary, Secondary School. School. Yes. And um, so you are new to all these areas, Ashanti region. Oh, oh yes, yeah. oh yes, oh yes. You know, a lot of nostalgia. Yes. Was there a striking difference in the kind of tree that you were used to before you went there? Oh, I Did wouldn't you notice know. that they uh, no, spoke no. tree differently from your Yes, grandpa? I knew the the Ashanti tree was different, but uh, maybe I'm blessed with uh, a good tongue. You yeah. know, I could. Uh, as we speak now, I, I speak and write and read Ga. Yeah, yeah. I do the same for uh, Chi. Yeah. I speak the Fanti yeah, I know you speak Fanti as I well. I speak Fanti perfectly. I yeah. speak the Ashanti if I switch it on. Mm -hmm. And I have my native, uh, my local Kwapim Chi mm -hmm. plus Latte. Wow. Which is my mother tongue. See? Wow. So well, then you are, you are I, I do that. Yeah. My unfortunate thing is that I never picked up my French. Mm -hmm. I missed it for good reasons. I've never yeah. picked up French. I'm you sorry. had an annoying French master. Not really. I had to make a choice okay. between, you know, reading French and moving on, and no teacher else, yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm not the type who procrastinates. I wouldn't wait for that. You know, just move on. <laughs> we were told that most of us who didn't take French seriously had annoying French teachers. <laughs> and uh, the only the, the, most of the times they did come and teach you French songs. Yeah, and then treat you like uh, nursery in a, in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, you graduated eventually from course, but you, I, I noticed that you went back to Prempe College. Yes, I did, and uh, there's a little story to that. Yeah. I thought maybe we could skip that. Yeah, never mind. I'll tell you. The what happened was that um, I had, you know, switched over from Prempe College first year. My mates didn't see me again. I was off. And just 36 miles between Konongo and Kumasi. But then, mind your whole business. So we never met. And uh, I was an, a science student, finally, when I chose my subjects, because I'd been graduated into my head by my grandma that I should try and read medicine. So she was more interested in me reading Latin and all that, and therefore the French, you see. So skip this and read your Latin and get hold of the mathematics and the sciences and be on your way. which advice I took. Only for my uncle to inform us, I think it was about sometime in March, the following year, that very year that we were supposed to take the exam, 1963. He came round and told the class uh, that, uh, sorry, he couldn't register the school uh, for science. And therefore, those of us reading science should advise ourselves, either we repeat, and then the following year, he would make sure that uh, they wow. do it. Or you have to uh, change subjects and uh, get on with it. So I chose the latter. I decided I wasn't going to wait for next year. Uh, I would choose, stop at my science Fine. and read something. So I added history and I think art and tree and all that. I knew enough about geography. I stopped reading my mathematics and uh, I was studying mathematics. I forgot about English and all that. I took the exam. And I had my grade one, all right. I moved on back to Pempe College mm. to do my sixth form. So you met your... My mates were quite surprised to find me back there. <laughs> and I've had to, you know, since then, retell this story over and over and over again. Uh, you see, in life, uh, you shouldn't be too concerned. That's on hindsight. 
about what happened yesterday. The thing is, it's happened. So what do you do now? And it's been my mantra, you know, the issue is what is happening now right. and what are you going to do about it? Mm. You know, mm. they, whatever happened yesterday is experience. It doesn't give right. you experience. So I moved on and uh, joined my mates. And, and but the, the mathematics that I dropped uh -huh. came back later on to haunt me when I got to university. <laughs> People, so we are having another conversation with Mr. Aferi Donko, and um, we've just talked about his upbringing, and you know, very exciting. We will be going into his time at the university, and then also getting into um, his professional life. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back to join him again. Welcome back. This is Footprint, and I have Mr. Afari Donko with me. You know, I get tempted to say Dr. Afari Donko, and I, I actually don't know why. Um, he, he never said he's doctor or anything. No, I'm not. He, he, he only said that the, the mother or the grandmother wanted him to be a doctor. So forgive me if I say doctor, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, so you're, 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 you're a banker, you know. And I, I, I'm in a hurry to get into this banking thing because that's what largely you have been known for. Um, how did you start your banking career? I'll tell you uh, quickly. Uh, if, to go back quickly to the university days, remember I told you about the mathematics catching up with me. Mm -hmm. uh, here was I, you know, the first year you choose three subjects and you do the FUE. And out of the three subjects, uh, you've got to be qualified to read any subject for that matter. Uh, I remember one evening, of, uh, it was a Friday or a Tuesday, one of the weekdays, where we were informed that uh, those of us who had selected economics as a subject <laughs> better watch out. You should come with additional mathematics. Uh, if you didn't have that, then you could not read. And therefore, to give us a chance, they would uh, organize uh, uh, classes. A cla no, no, a test. Test. Uh, a coming weekend, yes, on a certain Saturday. And there was a, a jump session. There was some entertainment thing on that Friday before that. And I had to miss it. I said, well, we should uh, take that exam. We took it, quite a number of us. And uh, the subject was pure calculus. And that's where maybe uh, I went back deep into the uh, uh, computer on my head to see what I could remember about that. Because yeah. I had stopped, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. studying that. So that's uh, ad, ad additional mathematics. Additional mathematics. Uh, what do we call it these days? Uh, score maths and elective. They elective. call it elective, elective maths. Is that uh -huh. correct? Mm -hmm. Elective maths. I don't even know why you use elective. It's additional mathematics. Eh? 
<laughs> and that's a powerful mathematics. Yes. So we did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I passed and therefore I was able to read economics. So after going through school and, uh, or college and finishing, just about uh, 67, November thereabout, I applied uh, or wrote, didn't apply then, I wrote various letters to various banks. I think all the banks, including, uh, you know, BRA, not a bank, and others, Central Bank included, asking them for uh, the opportunity to have a holiday job, sort of, proud to my results coming out. So I went there and uh, had the feedback from Barclays Bank that I could come and talk to them, which I did. So I remember after the exam in June, walking into the offices of Barclays, High, the Street, High Street, High Street. Uh, Mr. J.R. Papo was the uh, sub-manager, a Ghanaian. Uh, there was one white man in between, then the top gun was uh, Major Brown, who was the uh, bearded fellow, or the manager, branch manager. And High Street was the, uh, the top uh, branch of Barclays. So I was introduced to see the manager. Got in there and uh, good morning, said morning. He didn't even raise his head. <laughs> I was standing there and his head was bent down. He was writing something. So he raised up his uh, you know, head after the morning and writing whatever it is. He said, yes, young man, I can see you. You're ready to start work. And here you are, poor me, Kwame Nkrumah had been destroyed or gotten rid of 1966. It's ingratiated in my mind about this Pan-Africanism, colonialism and all that, and how we're trying to achieve the commanding heights of the economy and the country. <laughs> and this young man with a beard, a white man with a beard, being so, in my mind, obnoxious, and telling me or asking me about the fact that well, you are here, you know, I can see you are, you know, you want to uh, start work. So, as you can imagine, I, I lost it. Uh, and he could see that I wasn't amused. My reaction was, yes, sir, but why do you say that? And I think the way I said it <laughs> must have also startled him. And then he said, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, young man. I'll tell you why. The way you are dressed, your gray trousers, spotless white shirt, your tie, clean shaven, but above all, your polished shoes. <laughs> I then smiled, I said, thank you. And I said, let me explain, young man. I used to be in the British Army, and you see, we officers and our shoes, that's why we're Batman. You have to polish your shoes before presentation and all that. And then after the army duties, I went into banking. But I learned something. If you walk into my office looking for a little overdraft and I see that you are unkept, coming there, your shoes are dirty and all that and uh, scruffy looking, I will not give you my, my, any money. Because I have a feeling that if I gave you the money, you won't be able to pay me back. Because you don't know how to take good care of yourself. Mm. I learned that and it's tough. And after saying that, he said, so interview finished. We're going to start work. <laughs> I, I was, I was nonplussed. So no, no, he said, go and start work. And mm -hmm. I just said, thank you. And uh, to date, up to date, I, I never wrote a, an application for, for work anywhere. Is that Barclays Bank, NIB, uh, Merchant Bank? I don't know why. Circumstances are such that I've never mm. had the privilege of applying <laughs> for a job. So, you, were, so you, you started working um, there first as a holiday job? Now permanent, and when the results came in August. Mm -hmm. it was and permanent. stayed through? Yes, and stayed through. I worked for two years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was with Mr. Norte, Ian Norte, at Kimberley Avenue branch. There used to be a branch in uh, what you call the 18 in Accra, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Okanshi area there. And uh, the manager, my manager was Mr. Norte, Ian Norte. And a young man, just finished school, second year. And my good friend, Mr. Mpieni, my senior at Prempe College, 
he was then he was then moving from Capital Investment Board, now known as what Ghana Investment Center, GIPC uh, to GIPC, yeah, to yeah. NIB around mm -hmm. the corner. He was the one who advised that uh, they were uh, taking on people at NIB, and that if I would like to attend an interview, so I attended and got uh, selected. But I had to talk to my manager and brief him about what I wanted to do. And the manager then said, uh, uh, for those of you who speak Ghana, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I can get you small, or no, I was born. No, I knew I'm a good one. I can report, report in any fear. Then, I knew realize your objective, sir. So, funny, cock or say, to wait. Wherever you want to go, please go ahead with my blessings. But never look back. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Don't show any regrets for whatever happened in the past. Maybe that's part of my life now. And this is uh, coming from Mr. Omabo. Mr. Naughty. Mr. Naughty, okay. Yes. Yeah. We'll get to Mr. Omabo in a moment. Mm -hmm. Coming from Mr. Naughty, Ian Naughty. Yeah. I believe he's still around. Mm. And, and, uh, and that is it. So I moved on to NIB. Mm -hmm. And it was at NIB that uh, I do my normal work. That's where they had all sorts of joint ventures, cable meta, food specialties, you know, Liver Brothers, all kinds of joint ventures. And it came up that uh, that department that handled joint ventures was where Mr. Peony was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you're talking about Mr. Kwame Pieni? No, Mpieni. Oh, Mr. Mpieni. Kwajom Pieni. The pronunciation is not Mpieni. Mpieni. Mm -hmm. Mpieni. Yes. The whole country got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> There's difference between Pieni. Oh, of course. Of course. Mpieni. Mpieni. Yes, I'm talking okay. about Mpieni. Okay. My senior so school. this is the person who later on became the chief of staff. Is that yes. correct? Yes. All right. So it's yes. Kwajom Pieni. Yes. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we moved on, and uh, Mr. George Hammond, who is to be at the Investment Development Department of uh, NIB, uh, he was there with Mr. Pieni and Mr. Edwarda Free, who started Bank for Housing, if you remember. So we moved on, and George Hammond had been given the green light and was going to form his bank and uh, leasing company based in Swamil. I was there when uh, Kojo called me and said, uh, George wanted to see you. I said, what about it? He said, well, come and see him. Yeah. So go. And that he had called and somebody else, uh, he, he mistook your name and somebody else went there. So please go and see him, which I did. I went there and uh, George said, I'm in strategy, man. All because, you know, he had mistook my name for, uh, he mistook my name for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And sent it to Kojo. And Kojo thought that fellow, or he just thought that fellow was me. So when the fellow got there, he was able to tell him, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, everything's not, yeah. fine. No, no, everything's fine, but I'm looking for that, 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 that. And called Kojo to query mm -hmm. that why did you uh, send me so and so instead of so and so? And Kojo said, the fellow that you are talking about is not that, he's a fairy donko. So I said, yeah, yeah, good. But you don't have any idea. You don't have any idea. You don't have any idea. I polish my shoe. You don't have any idea. You know, again, the shoe issue. Mm -hmm. So I got there, and uh, George said, start work. And that's it. I didn't apply for a job. So this is after how many years of working with the National Investment Bank? Two years. OK. So two good. years back, two years NIB. All so right. by 72, I was with Merchant Bank. Uh, or then now what? Universal Bank. I yeah, guess. but let's let's still keep it as Merchant Bank. Okay. So this new project you're talking about by George Hammond mm -hmm. would would be Merchant Bank. That's Merchant Bank. Okay. It was first National Finance and Merchant Bank. That was the name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this George Hammond, who was he again? Oh, he was my everything. Mm. My everything. George Kufia Piasam Hammond, GKA Hammond. Sam. Apia Sam. Apiasam. Apiasam Hammond. Hammond. Yes. Uh, George Hammond used That's to live. That's Fanti Hammond. Typical Fanti Hammond. Mm -hmm. He used to live across the road here, Roman Ridge, Roman Road, uh, house number 12 or 18. Mm 
Oh, this side where this side. Uh, Nana Omar Abudems. That's correct. Kwakupum. That's correct. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, all okay. of them on that road. Mm. So, Jordan I'm Mabudem. the Roman rich boy, so I can, I can okay. put the context together. That, yeah. that, that's nice. Mm. That's nice. All oh, right. So he's a fancy man mm -hmm. that you work with. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, is this Swan Lake or Swan Mill? Swan Mill. USA. Swan Mill. That's USA. USA. across Swan Mill. Yes, yeah. USA of us. Oh. Second floor. That's mm -hmm. where we're based. Oh, that was a huge building yes. there. In those days. Yeah. It was huge. So the whole bank was on the second floor. Wow. Yes. So they say you were also stylish. Well, that's what he thought. That's what he said. <laughs> I try. I try. That would be an interesting, interesting uh, career progression. Well, because every parent at the time was hoping that their children would get into the structured formal employment, and in life it came to you like that. Uh, so Barclays, and then NIB, and um, the Merchant the Bank. beginning of Merchant Bank. But let me hold it right there. Let me go to the Barclays period and the NIB period. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people you encountered who later on became friends or you, you had to deal with later in life? Who later became friends? Or, or public? People, people I met, public yeah. people or mm -hmm. what? Yeah. At, at those, in those yeah. banks? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I wouldn't know off my, hand, off my head. But then let's, I talked about Mr. Norte. Yeah. Uh, I owe a lot to him. Kobna uh, Kwansa. Uh, we were in the same hall, one year ahead of me. Oh, I he see. later on became, he was the first graduate to be employed by Barclays Bank. Mm. Yes, and I was in the second batch mm -hmm. of graduates in Barclays Bank. Who later on rose to become the. the yeah, M became uh, MD, Barclays Bank MD. MD yeah. And then I think Vodafone chairman. Or yeah, chairman, yes, yes, that's correct. Kobna Kwansa, yes. Mm. Uh, Kobna, uh, my colleague there. Also a Fanti, uh, yes. I would imagine, also a yeah. Fanti. And then uh, Barclays days, a uh, lot of, I've mm -hmm. forgotten some of them. And okay, so NIB. NIB, of course, of course you talk about Mr. Mpiani, mm -hmm. you talk about uh, 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 Mr. Edward, uh, what did I say? The gentleman who opened Bank for Housing. Um, a free year. Edward, a free year. Yeah. Uh, Idam, Mr. Idam, who died, uh, was, you know, was also there at uh, NIB. And then my boss, he said, J. Jemfi, mm -hmm. who later on uh, became the MD of the Merchant Bank when George Hammond was uh, taken out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, J. Jemfi got in there. So when I was leaving Merchant Bank to start the discount house thing, mm -hmm. J. Jemfi was my MD, was the okay. boss uh, right. there. Mm -hmm. So I knew him from Merchant Bank All from right. uh, NIB days. Mm -hmm. see? And then the chairman of uh, the things that I started was also the first chairman of Merchant Bank. That was Mr. Jampo, EPL Jampo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. EPL Jampo. We'll come to Mr. Jampo. Yes. Now, while at Merchant Bank, um, hmm. which I, where I guess you were there for more than two years. Oh, I was there for 15 years or so. <laughs> yes. Because that's, that's where your modesty in, 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 in not touting your, your credentials would come in. Because everybody that's growing up here of Afra, you know, say, he brought us into Merchant Bank. He uh, mentored us when we were Merchant Bank. You know, I've asked course of them. I mean, I can't mention all the names. But tell me what Merchant Bank at the time looked like. And uh, how you eventually got into Kumasi and I think Takradi also. I don't know how it went. Yeah. But, see, every organization maybe even in, in football or anything, they all take their cue from the leader. And if you have a leader who has a certain style uh, or gait, if uh, the leader were to be a horse, you know, you, you, you have to uh, follow the leader, sort of. And that sort of permeates into the whole system. It gives an identity to that organization, that group. I'll give you an example. In those days uh, at Merchant Bank, where you had to apply for import license for everything that you want to set up. Sorry, to sir, again, not to cut you. What's import license? Import license to order anything. Yeah, you, needed to, to license you needed a license in order to, to uh, import, to import things into this country. Correct. 
um, get that. Young people get that. Okay. <laughs> so import license uh, was needed for everything. Uh, and that, please again help yes. me out. What was this within the military regime? No, 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 no. Uh, was it? Well, the bank was opened by Kutua Champong, so it must have been uh, mm -hmm. military yeah. regime. Yeah. And Kutua Champong was there to I don't know what. Seventy-seven. Yeah, seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Yeah. So it's all yeah. During that period, and, it's all uh, military um, regime. Your countryman took over Akufu. It, that was 78, yes, but I yeah. mm. still a military man. Yeah. Yeah. And then was taking Obroni Tewi had to took over, Rollins took yeah. over. And yes. then still military. <laughs> yes, yes. And then it, it dispersed with Liman. Liman, yes. well, briefly. Two years, two years. Uh, 18 months, yes. thereabout. Yes. Yeah. But it, it, this import license was to remedy what, what situation again? The, the system was such that importation of goods, of course, meant looking for the necessary foreign exchange to import. So whatever you exported and earned, you use part of that to import whatever you needed to consume. Uh, if you spend all your money in bringing milk and sugar and corned beef to consume, your roads will not be done. So you have to balance the equation and that government business. So the system was said that whatever you wanted to import, or what you wanted to do, and needed some foreign element, you had to be controlled. You know, you just don't get up and say, I want to, you know, uh, polish diamonds, or I want to do this, so I want to uh, get license to do it. You need license, permission, and then giving the world with all permission to bring in those things before you could mm -hmm. uh, import them. But so that's no more. That's no more, no more import license. No more mm. import license. It's now free for all, open market. And that's what has brought us here. And that's where we are. <laughs> that's where we are. People are importing chewing stick. <laughs> Charlie, wickedness <laughs> is what? <laughs> chewing stick power. <laughs> yes. anyway, so, so we will take a short break. This yes. is um, Footprint, and we have Mr. Afari Donko here. And we will spend a lot of time um, going through his own trajectory within the banking space, and then later on, um, diplomacy, and his own reflections about um, uh, this country and, and, and how he has seen Ghana. We'll take this short break. When we come back, we'll continue from Merchant Bank. Okay. Welcome back. This is Footprint, and I have Mr. Afari Donko uh, with me. And um, if you are if you are in in the banking space or financial services, uh, there are, uh, is a wealth of information or experience that he will share that will help you put things in the right context. You know, otherwise. <laughs> You just be reading non fire, you know non fire. <laughs> 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 so um I'm still interested in 
at the time, the, at, the, at the early stages of uh, Merchant Bank and what it meant to industrial development and our growth as a country, what do you think was the real core um, contribution of Merchant Bank? Uh, to my mind, it was a situation where you had a system that's supposed to be controlled. And to get around that system and get things done, the uh, open market way, you had to find a way of solving those problems. And that's why, presumably, you needed certain characters to get things done. I'll give you a little example, because both gentlemen that I'm going to talk about uh, have passed on to go on. And uh, they are not here to say yes or no, but I dare not speak ill of them. There was a situation where we needed import license to import uh, whatever. And you have to apply. You go to the ministries and apply for, uh, for that, fill a form, uh, various you know, meetings and interviews. And then hopefully they will attend meetings at the ministries and let you have it. At the time that we wanted to do that, uh, Governor Alessa Shiabo had, had then finished ministry of uh, finished being the principal secretary minister of finance. Mm -hmm. And I think he was heading to the governorship or something like that. This will be in the early 80s. It to be in the, no, 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 no. Uh, to be mid 70s. Okay. Mid seventies, mid seventies, rather to early seventy. I left NIB seventy two, so it might have been seventy four, five, six, thereabout. Okay. But certainly before eighties. And I remember, you know, we had this problem. We wanted some safes that you know keep some you know cash in and other documents. And uh, Mr. Shabo was a good friend, Mr. George Hammond. So we were not getting our way through and. I was around and the gentleman complained to his friend, Alessa Shabo, about uh, this issue of import license and how they were finding it difficult, so many meetings, blah, 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 and they weren't helping and he wanted to get going with his bank, blah, blah, blah. So, so Alessa Shabo said, George, you know what? You have to do it per what I call my understanding of your understanding letter. <laughs> uh, we're all confused. So, this man said, he said, of course he was confused. And he said, what's that? He said, you see, you attend meetings, you agree on certain things, and then you come back, and there's no reaction. And you are forced to go back and on and on. So you do that kind of letter where you write, confirming the meeting you had, mm -hmm. and uh -huh. the issues arrived at, so, 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 in so, your so, understanding. So, in your understanding. For them to confirm. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. That's my understanding. I, I will learn that. <laughs> so my understanding of your understanding of our meeting. <laughs> so you put it all down on paper and sign. And then you copy his minister. And you copy you to your whatever, your chairman or something, and send it to him. And pronto, you will have a reaction. Because the civil servants wouldn't want to be caught napping. Yeah. Especially in a military regime. Because they wouldn't want the buck to be passed on to them. They wanted to stay where it should stay. And therefore, we learned that. And it's all due, in this case, due to George and, uh, and, and Alessa Sherbo's partnership, their friendship, and therefore networking matters. Very but that the personality of the principal uh, personality is vital. Mm. Because uh, George was the aggressive type. He will get things done. You know, difficulties here you may have. And as he used to tell us, if I send you out to go and look for something or get information or do a report, and you don't come back and tell me that it rained and you went there and the fellow wasn't there. I'm not interested in your problems. I'm interested in the results. Mm. You bring me that paper. Where is it? And, and that is it. So you are sent on a notice or uh, sent on an errand. You go there and deliver. And you deliver on time. And you come back and report. He's not interested in your headaches. How you did it, that's, not, that's your headache. And that one I picked, mm. and uh, it stuck with me. It helped me. 
and uh, that's it. And Merchant Bank, who were some of the personalities uh, that, that you worked with, came after you, you mentored, that later in public oh, life? Quite a, quite a number of them. you remember? We, uh, we, are, we, we have time to listen. Okay, so. quite a number of them. Uh, Mr. Fred Owari is one. Mm, he came to Merchant uh, Bank. Yes. Oh, straight from school or from another bank? Uh, uh, straight from school or another bank, I wouldn't know. But he came to Merchant Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Judata. Judata? Yes, now the chairman. Currently chairman of GCB, GCB. Bank. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fred Apalu mm -hmm. was there. Uh, and quite, uh, my, Mr. Dechi, if you said Dechi was there. Mrs. Stephanie Ansan, who was passed Mr. on. Mrs. Dechi um, would later on. Um, HFC. HFC. Yes. HFC, yes. 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 And then Steffi, Stephanie Ansan. Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, uh, what HFC Bank? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who passed yeah, on? Of yeah. course, Mr. Yabuamwa. Mr. Yabuamwa. My yeah. brother-in-law, uh, oh, okay. who is uh, you know. Um, uh, who did the uh, uh, stock exchange? Stock exchange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and quite a number of them. Uh, if I miss somebody else's name, I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> of yes, course, of the cuff. Yes, so, so, so you number. have uh, Mr. Fred Owari, mm -hmm. who would later on. Um, go with you to Securities Discount House, mm -hmm. is that correct? Correct, and Discount uh, Company, yes, SDC. Yeah, um, and then you have Fred Apalu, who would later yeah. on become uh, the MD, the MD of the same of the, institution. Yes. yes. So um, I went with both of them. Okay, mm -hmm. and you have Mr. Dechi, who would later on um, do HFC Bank. Mm -hmm. And Steffi. And Stephanie, is it Baita Ansa, mm -hmm. who now, wow. Mm -hmm. You and know. I we left. Uh, I left uh, Mr. Chris Nati there. Chris who Nati will later on become the MD, MD of, of uh, uh, Merchant Bank. Bank. Yeah. And um, so you see the nucleus mm -hmm. and how everybody got themselves into. Uh, let me borrow the words of yourself and Kutua Champ for commanding heights that's of the banking <laughs> industry. And, and and that's something very beautiful. So mm -hmm. so now you see that when he says that he he just contributed his quota. Yes, it was a big quota. It's nothing small. <laughs> well, uh, well, well from where we sit. But yes, <laughs> I, I get you. Thank yeah. you for the compliment. Mm -hmm. But you see, one should always recognize that nobody is sacrosanct. Only oh, no, God no, no, no. is. Yes, Only God yes, is. Yes, 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 so yes. in all things, you know, don't overrate yourself. No, it you, is you always have, better. You haven't done that. And the background is that, and, and, and of course, I'm way younger than you are. But a little experience is that you probably would not have been the first person with that opportunity. But we see the outcomes of your effort and the relationships you built. To your credit and to the glory of God, yes. there are others who messed it up completely. And that's why we, we want to recognize that um, you know, on this program. But again, I, 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 I want to situate the, the, that merchant bank era. Mm -hmm to uh, how you related with the other banks that came up within the period. So you have the Bank for Housing and Construction and Cooperative Bank and all the. How was the banking industry like at the time? It was, it was fairly buoyant. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see, most of us, or I would say all of us, met the system. Okay. Now, to give you an idea, George Hammond is a trained Surveyor, quantity surveyor. He wasn't into banking. And he went through NIB, was in the investment development department, helped to set up your joint ventures. Later on, went into banking. He became a big star. You see, when we get to these areas of discussions, that's where I'm tempted to go off script a little bit and recognize the fact that we are all where we are for a reason. Yeah. And you are not there because of your brilliance. No. You are there because circumstances are such that you found yourself to be there, you kept your eyes wide open, and you got your directions from wherever you got them from, and you Pursued. stuck yeah. stuck to the knitting. Mm -hmm. Stick to the knitting and go for it. Don't be worried too much about falling down and various vicissitudes of life. No, no, no. Recognize your maker and go on for it. Go for it. Mm. And it will fall where it may. 
as we speak, who knows what is going to happen tomorrow? And yet, life goes on. We're not going to sit down and talk about the difficulties we've had in setting up this beautiful system mm -hmm. uh, we're having this chat. Mm -hmm. Various chats will follow. Yeah. The thing is, when you had the opportunity, what did you do with it? That's correct. So I, I asked that question mm -hmm. within um, a certain context of, um, you know, we, we, we hear of, of, of the Kutua Champon days where mm -hmm. most of the banks, ex of course, accept the Barclays and the Standard Chartered mm -hmm. or Standard Bank at the time mm -hmm. um, were purely foreign owned, um, where people were giving uh, uh, cheats to go to the bank and take loans. Um, what's your account of that? Those things might have existed. I never saw one anyway. You mean you didn't see the cheat? No, no, I didn't see any cheat. What I suspect might have happened, and those who said they said they had cheats, I don't know, perhaps true. I never saw it. But this uh, networking type of thing, it exists up to today. Every, it has always been so. So so and so attended school with so so and so, and they're all looking for a job. In our days, it was easier after school, you find a job. You know, there weren't many uh, college students anyway. And therefore, you could easily find a job. But in case you couldn't, an uncle or a friend would tell you, oh, wait a minute, you want a job, man? Okay, Kwesi, uh, come over here. Wahina, Bomadina, maybe. Furnish a baby mom. That's all. And that is all. And to be done. Uh, also, he alone do I need you maybe you. She's not my man. Now, that's all. That's all you have to say. I think the context is that yes. people could secure loans without due process, if you like. I agree. Uh, I agree. Know. Those and things did happen. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I never saw one. Okay. Uh, because uh, that would suggest to me that it wasn't prevalent within the bank that you worked. In. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. And uh, at Merchant Bank. In the period that I was there, I was mainly in charge of credits and marketing. So if something silly like that happened, it will come to my desk. Mm -hmm. I have to present to the credit committee or whatever, but push it up for approval and all that. I will know, but not on my watch. You know, as a kid um, growing up in Kumasi, I, I saw the building in Inshiaeso. Yes. And I, I thought that I deserved to work in Merchant Bank when I grew up. Wonderful. I didn't know that, Charlie. But I'm born say I couldn't make it to my hand, but. <laughs> but, 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 but that's, it's not a question of what more. It's a question of providence. It's yeah, a well, question of, you know, yeah, there's so yeah, many things yeah, in life. Yeah, yeah. So I love it. Like I mean, I, I used to work, I used to attend in Shiasu International yes. School. So I used to walk around well, the Metan Bank yes. just to enjoy the view yes. of Metan Bank. And Fred Owari was there. Oh, wow. Yes. I go, Fred, I didn't know you then. <laughs> All yeah. right, so on this note of the, how Merchant Bank uh, started um, with um, Mr. George Hammond and then uh, some of the early people, um, employees, including uh, Mr. Afari Donko, and um, who are some of the early employees again? Uh, who else? Uh, in fact, I have to talk about my secretary, Mrs. Yabua, Comfort Christy Yabua. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, yeah, Comfort yeah. came from Bank of Ghana. All right. I was secretary to, uh, eventually secretary to Mr. Hammond. Mm -hmm. And when Hammond left, she became my secretary mm -hmm. and stayed with me throughout Merchant Bank, through SDC, you name wow, it, uh, wow, Card Bank, wow, whatever wow, bank. Wow, yes. Wow, wow. Uh, so, you know. Uh, a lovely old lady now, she wouldn't like to be called old lady, uh, who is well into her 80s. Oh. So uh, I hold her in very high esteem. Lovely. Yes, lovely. Comfort. Well, on this note, this is where we lower the curtains on this episode of Footprint. You've been listening to Mr. Afari Donko and um, his whole trajectory. Um, part of the, the story of his banking career. Um, we'll definitely do another episode which will now take us into the, the real issues. Thanks for <laughs> watching. Thanks for listening. My name is Samuel Atamensa and this has been Footprints.